Hello, welcome to Trish's channel. And you know, I said I didn't have time to do a video. I thought I could do a quick one here. This one is, um, you've probably seen from some of my videos that I have a fondness for crows because I made friends with some down the road. Um, and once I get my um, garden sorted, I'm hoping to, um, what do you call it? Um, get some in my garden. Well, there's some down by the tree at the end of the thing, but I want to entice them down as it were, so I can have some nesting in my, you know what I mean, because I like them, so, you know, just have nesting in my garden and feeding off bits and bobs, uh, as you can see in the photos, I've got some equipment for it, um, one of the crow callers I use, I use to let my friends, as it were, down the road, they got on there, um, ugh. so I saw this useful site, as you can tell by some of the photos, pictures I've got in there. I've already fought ahead and fought, you know, followed the thing, so. But it's just so you can know as well, yeah? So. 12 tip, tips on how to attract crows to your yard or garden, isn't it, if you live in the UK. Alright. A familiar site in many places crows are intelligent and interesting birds with quirky habits that make them unique birds to attract their raucous call is hard to miss but what these birds lack in a melody a song they are more than they more than make up for in character and intelligence well they may seem as a nuisance not really I don't think they are they are they're even funny if you watch if you get them if they're protecting their nest or patch and seagulls come along, they're happy to take on seagulls. It's hilarious. Um, there are a variety of benefits to attract crows, attracting crows from pest control to urban cleanup. How to attract co crows can present a problem since crows don't typically visit feeders. We can attract them to your backyard with a mix of habitat, food, and old fashioned patients. Oh, I should have brought some tissue up. Um, provide roosting around. Crows are social animals and like plenty of places to stop and observe what's going on around them. So you can attract crows providing a roosting ground from. They typically prefer horizontal roosting pole poles and can be seen atop utility poles or other tall structures. If you don't have trees or similar structures in your yard, you can improvise by erecting your own. That beautiful, beautiful bird. Use existing structures such as trees or fence posts or install your own pole with a crossbar on top. Not only will it give crows a nice place to settle, but it also allow you to observe them better. They're sociable birds and need many places to sit, rest, and commune with their mates. Give their large, given their large size and often excitable behaviour. Let's see if I can small this a bit. Um, Old-fashioned concrete bird baths can be very useful when you are trying to attract crows. Oh, we got one of them, but it's currently overgrown because it is a life. Not a lifelong project, but it's going to take, it's not, well, Rome wasn't built in a day, but once we get the, I think, because our garden's got out of control, because, you know, my dad was just too old to look after, etc., and I was at work, etc., and, you know, he's passed away, so you got to, but yeah, anyway, put the, one of our pet projects is, is to get the garden all back down so it's easy to maintain, you know what I mean, because it's gone wild, but once we've chopped it all down, we've got it sorted, then we're going to um, put bits back in it, like, you know, plus it's easy to maintain the grass, and, um, I've got some decoy crows. I'm gonna make bits for you know because my mum like always wanted a bird, an aviary, as it were. But it's like we don't need to have birds in cages. You just attract them or with feeders. You can know, get little birds attract, yeah, you know, bird, bird feeders and stuff like that. Right. Install a birth bath essential for birds. Install a bird bath, an essential element to attract any bird to entice crows to your area. Water is extremely important for all birds, and crows are no different. Crows need water for bathing, drinking, eating and feather maintenance, not to mention cooling off in summer heat. During the hot months, crows will 
to send to your yard to beat the heat and will return in winter as other sources become limited. I heard somewhere, if, if you've got a bird bath, because <coughs> a lot of birds, especially like crows, don't uh, migrate for winter. They actually hang around. But if you've got a bird bath, it's got water in it and it's frozen. What you do is you smash up the ice, break it up so it's liquid again. Um, given their size, crows prefer large, larger bird baths, especially those that are dark, long and slightly deeper than traditional shallow baths used for songbirds and other members of the corvidae family. Crows will also store excess food, with bird baths being a popular choice. Like other animals, hawks and raccoons come to mind. Crows have also been known to dip or dunk their food in water to moisten food, freshen it up or take it back to the nest to other family members. Remove all noise. Although they are vocal opportunists, crows are easily spooked by random noises and they're not free and will not frequent areas that will disturb them in this way. Last, um, our garden's perfect in a way, because even when we live near traffic, you can't hear it as much. And also if they're down that tree, like I said, <coughs> where our vegetable patch used to be, there's a tree there and they're all up there. Um, and I'll try and get them to come join me, as it were. I mean, sort of thing. Um, so, considering they're not spooked by that, and I've seen some up on the neighbour's tree as well. I'm like, you buggers! It's like, you know I mean, <laughs> it's like, come and come to my garden. You're welcome to my garden. Stay as long as you like. But, anyway, um, uh, crows are spooked random noise. Well, not frequent areas that will be disturbed them in this way. Remove random noises to keep your yard attractive for these interesting birds. Items like. A loose gate swing in the breeze or bells or whistles will spook them off, making them unlikely to return. Take care not to add any additional sources such as wind chimes, bells or whistles as it will further drive them away. I'll tell you what, when you see them in mid-flight like that, they look like a bird of prey. It's beautiful. If your goal is to attract crows, it's a good idea to stand in your garden and observe what may spook them. These highly intelligent opportunistic omnivores won't return to any area that presents such a skittish environment, preferring more stable sources of food and, and inhabitants. They won't scare away. The only thing that's going to be a bit of a ball ache is there's cats there, but um, hopefully I'm going to build them a thing where they can't, you know, where I can see them and observe them, but the cats can't get them, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? They will avoid anything that seems like a threat to them, so it's best to take note to poss of possible threats like menacing wind chimes and keep them out of the garden. Place some decoy crows, which is what I got. De crows are sociable birds roosting in large numbers and will follow other crows to their roosting and feeding grounds. Place one or two decoy cro crows around your yard to make use of this crow mentality. So I wonder if I can get them to do it now, even though it's not, what's it, um, what thing you did, because around the patio there's loads of space. Uh, seeing one crow roosting or feeding in your yard will often attract other crows to follow suit. Crows are visual animals and they will be cu curious to investigate. The ideal setup is three to four stations. Because what is the thing is what you do, right? And it's got, that's why I got bird uh, crow caller. Because I am practicing to do it vocally, but it's very hard to do, etc. Um, to a degree. I mean, sometimes I do get it right. Because I'm thinking, you know that, that noise we used to, that people used to make? You see it in films like... Um, Evolution, where he's like, caca, caca. It's, it's basically exactly like that noise, but if you get the tone right, it comes out as like a caw, caw. Now, I'll try and do it. <clears throat> Don't blame if it's crap, because it's just take a neck. Yeah, that rhymed. Caw, 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 caw. <clears throat> the problem is, your saliva gets in the mouth. Like something. You need to add a little bit of moist mouth, but not too much, if that makes sense. Caw, 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 caw. <clears throat> That might sound right to them, but to me it just sounds too deep, like a raven. You know what I mean? Well, they're saying that. I mean, my, deep, my crow caller sounds a bit louder than that. And not quite crow-like. But again, I've, I've learned hunting sims and watching hunting videos. Is they pick up differently to us anyway. It's like you could have a, a moose caller or a deer caller that makes a weird noise. That sounds like a strangled a person being strangled. But to them it sounds like hello you know what I mean it's weird anyway. um three or four stationary decoys at least one moving decoy um incredibly intelligent they won't be fooled by static displays and movements it's the key to entice 
than to follow the crowd. You can make your yard much more attractive to passing flocks by setting up crow decoys. An eye-catching display of both stationary and movable decoys, so you can get some on the right string, so you get some moving around or, you know what I mean? Will be sure to hook their attention and pull them in. Set your decoys up in a friendly group to mimic feeding and foraging crows to invite uh, new crow visitors in. So maybe if you have a post, I suppose you have two by the feeder, one over there, one over there. You only to make it look like they're coming in something. Lure them in with crow calls. There's no mistake in the telltale core of a crow. By luring them in with crow calls can be fairly easy if done right. Like all birds, crows use calls to communicate with each other as well as other birds. That's why I think it's easy just to get a call. Because if it works for hunting, you're using the same thing. But instead of it to kill them, you're using it to track them to... You know what I mean? Whether it's a familiar call, call, call to summon other family members or to sound alarm to alert presence of a predator, crows have many different calls and you can use them to encourage them to visit your property. Popular calls include the attention call rally call and stress call um yeah the call 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 three times means hello i'm here and hi where are you and the call 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 four times is hi i'm over here i worked that one out just by them talking to me because sometimes they'll spot me and then go hello and or sometimes i'll put food down and they'll say hello to me that's that's, that's the cute <laughs> Yes, it'll do that. Like, gah, gah, gah. I, I know. You want some more? You want some more almonds? They love almonds. That's like luxury food for them. You can purchase devices online that can emit various calls, an electronic caller, or use a more traditional reed caller, similar to a duck whistle. So, yeah, that's what I got. Crow callers, such as the one the hunters use, emit low crow noises, which creates curiosity for crows, giving the inquisitive birds a reason to come and investigate. The difference is that you do not intend to harm them the crows respond quickly to calls but the best times of day are early mornings and late evenings i eh, might try that tempt them with the right food while not picky to eat as they will eat almost anything it's important to tempt them with the right food this may take some trial and error as they can be surprisingly pick finicky if you leave a certain food out you aren't getting any bites consider that they aren't interested and try something different oh they love almonds um starting with something that will catch their eyes as they fly overhead and pique their interest to take a close look peanuts in a shell are not any perfect for this they are a favorite of crows just to make sure they're unsalted oh like the monkey nuts in the shell uh, i could get some of those as well but once the crows are comfortable and found your food source you can introduce other foods the only problem i find from what i've seen in monkey nuts and i don't really like to encourage them is the fact is if they can't break into them which should be easy anyway they're sometimes cheap by dropping them in the road and let the car drive over them. I don't want that to happen. I, don't want, you know I, mean? I don't want them to get squished or anyone crash car. Crows will enjoy a wide variety of food on their own, so be sure to try a variety of things to entice them to your yard. Healthy options include fruits, nuts, eggs, popcorn, ah. pasta, and oh, that's probably an unpopped uh, popcorn. Isn't it? Pasta and cat or dog food. Look for a low phosphorus brand with at least. Um, the least amount of filler and additives that are not good for birds or your pet for that matter hey, in case your pet decide, in case you put cat food out and your cat smells it chicken and duck eggs chicken meat and fat and bird seed are also healthy options although crows love love junk food who doesn't feeding them to it is no kinder to them than it is when you eat it yourself stick to healthy options similar to what they f would find in nature creating a feeding route simply put out a food source that is not an is not enough um, as it may ensure that crows find your property but ultimately won't keep them coming back the key is to put out at the same time each day to create a feeding routine yeah because sometimes i don't see mine for a while because they because if i'm on holiday they're like oh he's fucked off sort of thing excuse me french but it's kind of like um when i come back the thing is this it's funny because they actually recognize it's really quite full sorry uh, the, yeah they actually remember you and stuff like that sorry that's you know I hope you didn't hear that. Um, pardon me. Um, cunning and inquisitive crows are more likely to come to your yard if you create you create a routine for them. They are quite intelligent and will learn your schedule if you stick to one. Establish a routine by putting food out at the same time each day so they'll know when to expect you and the food. Uh, 
and trusting by nature, establishing this rhythm for interaction will help build trust and keep them coming back for more. A regular source of food is very attractive to them as it means they will work less to fulfill their feeding needs. At first, at, at first, squirrels and other birds will eat the food, <laughs> but giving the crows both time to find and trust the source and you'll start your relationship off on the right foot. Stay away from the food until the birds are comfortable with you, but keep in mind that even after years of friendship, a crow will still be skittish and standoffish if it's in its nature. Yeah, because it's quite funny, because even though my crows trust me, when they go to take the nuts, it's hilarious, you should watch it, they do a jump, a cyber jump like that. They're kind of like, is he seeing me? Can he see me? And it's like, they look like, I'm gonna nick that nut and make a run for it, if that makes sense. They don't, they just go there and they, it's like, you know, you know, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but you know like the magazine of a BB gun, all well, the pellets, they pick them up, their mouth looks like that. And they literally just shove as much as they can in their mouths. It's hilarious. But when they try and pick them up, they look at you and they do a sideward jump. Like they get like they're shifty. It's like, I'm going to nick your nuts. I'm going to nick your nuts. It's like, I put them there for you. <laughs> Cute. Um, location of a feeder is the key. When it comes to a feeder placement, it's all about location. While not the pickers to eat, crows usually feed on the ground and will eat almost anything and while it may be not keep them back long term they need to find your food source in the first place choose a spot in your yard that is visible from the sky to catch their eyes that's one why yes yeah, why i need to wait for the thing to close um as they fly over once you become a dependable stop of the regular travels close cr close crows will flock to your yard to scoop up any treats you leave out for them i've got like a, a metal tray dish thing that they can put some in Tray bench or empty bird bath is great for putting food uh, out for crows due to both their size and durability. You'll need something sturdy enough for these sizable birds and rugged enough that they won't be able to destroy it. Old bir uh, concrete bird baths are excellent for crow feeders due to their size, weight and stature. 9. Start a compost bin. Of om om omnivorous scavengers, crows have been known to visit compost bins for their smorgasbord go away adverts smorgasbord of food, of food available from fruit and veg scraps discarded food and eggshells compositing offers a <clears throat> pardon me a, offers a great natural feeding station for crows you are trying to track start a compost bin in your yard to make use of kitchen scraps and other food waste that can be broken down into organic material known for, to forage for garbage and other household waste crows will visit piss off sorry excuse me french we'll visit compost bins or heaps to search f for what is uh, for just the right tasty treat they use strong bills to pick at fruits and vegetables kitchen scraps and anything else they might find a compost bin offers a steady stream of healthy food products and, and it's eco friendly alternative to garbage bags left to their own devices crows will rummage through your garbage bags looking for anything they can eat um, composting gives them an alternative source of nutrition without mess to clean up. Keep your pets inside. Crows will not descend to a yard if there are any pets outside. So keep pets like cats and dogs inside, especially if at feeding times, is a no-brainer. Small pets like hamsters, gerbils, rabbits are safe, but predatory pets like dogs and cats will put your crows on high alert. Not only will they scare the crows away, but they may contaminate the food sources and make it less attractive to begin with. If you have cats and dogs roaming yard, you'll find it difficult to attract crows in the first place. You may want to fence off a separate area large enough for your pet to keep an area clear of the crows as well. Um, remember, crows will pref uh, prefer comparatively large spaces, spaces, feeling uncomfortable and threatened in smaller spaces. If you cannot separate the areas, make sure pets are supervisors, supervised when outdoors at all times. This gives them freedom to be outdoors while still providing a safeguard for your new Corbett friends. 11. Leaving shiny objects around your yard. Leaving shiny objects around your yard is an old wives' tale that has seemingly stood the test of time. Although there is no empirical evidence to support the behaviour, cor corvid enthusiasts have many anecdotes about crows being attracted to shiny objects and trinkets. And while there not, may not be any scientific data to support the theory that crows are attracted to shiny things, anecdotal evidence abounds of stories of crows and other corvids taking shiny objects. Experts agree it's most likely that crows are attracted to objects of obvious value of the, to their owners. Young corvids in particular are very investigative and love to handle objects. 
Once you've established trust with your birds, leaving shiny objects around your yard with a relationship further. Use shiny or flashy things that will catch sunlight and you're bound to attract their attention, especially the younger and more curious birds. 12. Don't try to get too close. Don't try to get too close, although they can be found in a wide variety of habitats. Large-scale persecution of crows in the 1920th centuries have made them shy of people. Across much of the population, crows are seen as pests and nu 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 nuisances to be kept away. After years of friendship and feeding, they'll, they'll be slightly aloof and sound off due to skittish nature. Perhaps this is one of the reasons they have not only survived, but have thrived as a species for so long. There is a lady who... Um, there's videos I've seen where they do actually uh, will probably land on you if you stay still and they develop a trust, if that makes sense. Um, but you, you have to stay very still and just, you know, let them do whatever's comfortable, basically. <clears throat> well, they may give you a cold shoulder at first. Uh, sho may give you the cold shoulder at first, that should be. Crows will take the, their own time to do, in deciding to trust you or not, and since most humans view them as a nuisance, their distrust in us is obvious and unwarranted. Remember, crows are wild animals, and their charms should be appreciated from afar to uphold this relationship if you need to get up close view. Binoculars are always an excellent option. Well, there you go. I hope you found that useful. Some of the things I'm going to do to my garden... Because ever since making friends with them, you know, you just, it, it's like, you know, when you become a, it's like when you have your first dog and then you become a dog person. It's like when you have your cat and you, have your, and you become a cat person. It's like, they are really endearing but uh, animals, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, if you ever make friends with crows or if, it, if some of you have out in the park or something, you know what I mean, you know what I mean? So, um, but to get them to go in your garden would be really fun and really cool. And plus you can take some stunning photography as well. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it's what I'm going to use some pointers in this. I've, well, I've already started, like I've got crow callers anyway, um, to call the ones I get, made friends with down the road. Um, and it's quite funny because people are like, whoa, wow, look at that. Look. You get these little, it's, it's kind of kind of cool in a way when I'm going down the road. And I go, Bruh! I go, caw, caw, caw. not that quick, but I mean, but, but I give them a shout as it were. And you've got these kids walking around with their parents. And then the crows go fly down to, uh, to see me, and they're like, "Look, mum, he's talking to the crows." And you know what I mean? It's like it's it's, it's nice. It adds magic, you know. It, to um, you know, if you've got children as well, it adds a bit of magic. It's like, "Wow, mum, you can talk to birds," or you know what I mean? Whether you know what I mean? So anyway, um, yeah. So if you like, if you found this video helpful and useful, and you like this video in just in general, and found it informative, then hit like. And um, if you're new to this channel then please subscribe it would be great to have you here and until next time folks take care and cheerio crows are extremely smart birds who have demonstrated the ability to identify individual people recognize themselves in mirrors and even understand that other crows still exist when they're not visible they can also problem solve better than some primates for example scientists found that crows will bend wires into hooks to lift food that's out of reach if their beaks are too short or weak to get it. This shows that they are able to imagine how a tool should look before making it, while taking into account the physical properties of objects around them. They can also tell humans apart, remember human faces for years after being acquainted with them, learn songs from other members of their species, and call one another by name. Even though some might say that crows could be considered the underdogs of the animal kingdom, they are in fact very intelligent creatures. Many people compare crows to monkeys because they have a tendency to be mischievous. They'll take small objects from people as well as peck at things that could potentially hurt them.